as you may have guessed, we're not in Silicon Valley anymore. This is Kailisha, one of the biggest and poorest townships in South Africa. What are you cooking? I'm cooking the Afghan meats. And whether you're into crypto to make money or to save the world, emerging markets like this might be the place to be. My view is that this is where the blockchain should start. In the US or in sophisticated countries, the way I see blockchain is the blockchain is kind of like a fun thing. It's a movement against centralization and it's a fun technology game that everybody's playing. But it's not a necessity. You certainly don't need it. In Africa, you actually need it. The biggest problem? It's nearly impossible here to get or send money. Look around you. There's no infrastructure here. There's no ATM here. How do they get the money? And if you think it's any better in the big cities, think again. My name is Kudakwashe Ian Mchingami. Kudakwashe? Yeah, Kudakwashe, yes. Or Ian. Uh, or Ian. Yeah. <laughs> like so many others in Cape Town, our Uber driver Ian migrated from another part of the continent in search of work. Cape Town is like New York of Africa. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's got family back home. Yeah, yeah. And they send money back. They definitely send money back. Ian included. He's got a mother and brother back in Zimbabwe, but sending them money? Far from easy. And you can't transfer money with the bank? It takes days or weeks. And sometimes the banks didn't even money. So it's a hassle. More than a hassle, it could be the difference between life and death. And like recently, I sent money to my mother. She was going to the hospital. So um, I wanted to send $100. Unable to wait for a bank transfer, Ian used a money wiring service. It was immediate, yes. But the downside? Does it cost money? 10%. Do that. 10%? Yeah, 10%. It's a lot. Which brings us to a very interesting third option of sending money in Africa. To the bus. To the bus. Yeah, what to does that bus. mean? To find out, Ian took me to where it all goes down. So this is the bus stop uh, that I was talking about. You approach the driver, then you talk to him. Are you able uh, to, to assist me? And then the driver will say yes. And you wish good luck. The bus will arrive in Zimbabwe. And then I hand him the money. Yes. And that's the agreement. That's the agreement, it's yes. It's just a verbal agreement. It's a verbal agreement, agreement yes. And you hope that he takes the money to where yes, you want yes, to go. Yes, that's true, that's true. And from there, well, things get a little dicey. And if the bus gets a flat tire. <laughs> Sometimes the delay, bus oh, breaks down. Oh, the bus is going to get Oh, no, the bus is going to be robbed. Robbed? Back in the car, I was still stunned. Yeah. It seems kind of crazy to go to a bus and hand over your hard-earned money yeah. to him and say, please bring this to my family. I trust yeah. you. Yeah. It's just something that most people wouldn't do. He just wanted to survive. I wish there was another option uh, that is safe and cheap to send money. 